Here we go again and... Considering it's January, I keep lucking out with the weather whenever I choose to film. At the moment, honestly, like every time I turn my cameras on, it turns to sort of bright blue skies. It's amazing. I mean, it's cold, it's two degrees, but it's just beautiful. Everything's beautiful. I can't complain. Well, actually, no, I can complain for many reasons, but one specifically this morning, because yes, hello one and all, and welcome to Scene Through Glass. Uh, last night, whilst this X3 was parked up outside my flat in London, it seems as though someone's decided to steal the... Ooh. The pole pole. Undercover popo. That was cool. Um, but yeah, it seems like someone's decided to steal the glass element of my driver's side wing mirror. I mean, come on! Ah! I mean, there are many worse things that could have happened and, and, and are happening around the world, so I don't want to overreact. It's just like, honestly, as frustrated and furious as I am, though, I'm also a little bit impressed because the job that whoever it was has done it's just kind of like, you know, it's sort of clinical, it's surgical. They've unplugged all the electrical elements. They haven't snapped any wires or anything like that. As far as I can tell, there's absolutely zero damage to the wing mirror housing. So all that's missing is the glass, which is, you know, dangerous and, and really annoying. But at the same time, like, well done. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why I'm applauding the thief that stole a part of my car. And, oh, you know, I was like, oh, why? Like, honestly, with everything going on at the moment, why are you doing that? And I found out, well, potentially one of the reasons why someone might have decided to steal the glass element, because I called up BMW to order a replacement part, and they told me it's going to cost £136. I mean, I want to go and steal one. I keep looking at X3s going, hmm, I wonder if I could do as good a job as the thief did on my car. But no, I mean, as I say, just one of those absolutely frustrating and infuriating things. But anyway, today we are off to BMW to pick up that replacement part, but don't worry, that's not the whole video because yeah, that would be quite dull. I'm actually using my trip to BMW as an excuse to drive another BMW because I'm not actually going to go there in the X3. Recently, at the Duke of London, where my STG HQ is located, Merlin, the Duke himself, got a very interesting BMW into stock. So I thought, heck, why don't I, uh, why don't I use this as a bit of an opportunity to check out that car. So, to STGHQ to find this very intriguing and quite rare BMW. Come on. Yes! Oh, get in! If you don't know, this is my new sim racing rig. It's got a bit of a sort of temporary setup at the moment because I've got a new wheel and new pedals and things coming, but SL Sim Racing actually built the rig, have lent me some of their stuff so that I can start using it. I've been downloading F1 2020 now for what feels like about four days. I don't know why it was taking so long, but I left it downloading overnight and now it's ready. Uh, anyway, I want to quickly talk to you about today's video sponsor because yes, this video has been sponsored by Blinkist. Now, I'll be honest, I've never been a big reader. Ever since I was young, I've always struggled to find the time the motivation, the energy to read books. And I, that frustrates me because I know it's a great way to learn and I'm always keen to learn. So every year my New Year's resolution is to finally get into reading books, but it just never really happens. But that's why I think Blinkist is amazing because they've taken thousands of non-fiction books and compress them into 15 minutes that you can read or even listen to. It means you're getting the kind of key information, the golden nuggets of these incredible books in a compressed and easy to consume way. It just makes reading a thing for me now. So head over to Blinkist.com forward slash STG. The first 100 people will get access to Blinkist Premium for free for seven days. So you can check it out, see what you think. If you like it, great. If you don't like it, well, never mind. Just cancel it. No costs incurred. But yes, if you want to go ahead and become a member, you'll get 25% off your membership. Now, there are 14 million users of Blinkist, so I'm not the only one who thinks it's great. And when you sign up, they ask you kind of, you know, what you want to what you want to learn about, whether it's how to be motivated or start a business or manage your workflow or even learn about interesting people. For example, the Barack Obama book, one that I really wanted to read so I could learn more about that quite incredible guy, but I just never really had the time. Well, I just knew I was never going to read the book, but now I can consume it on Blinkist, which is brilliant. So yes, as I say, head over Blinkist.com forward slash SDG. If like me, you've never really got into reading books, but you kind of want to, 
This could revolutionise your life. Uh, right, that is the car that I'm here to check out. Hoo -hoo -hoo. So welcome to an E34 M5 Touring. These cars are insanely rare. They made less than a thousand of them back in the mid nineties when it came out. And you just don't see them. So the minute I found out Merlin got one into stock, I was like, I, I need to have a go. BMW have only ever made two M5 Tourings, M5 station wagons. This generation and then the later E60, E61, the big V10 cars. So it's not really a thing and as someone who really loves wagons it's just infinitely cool but it's also the last six cylinder m5 it represents a real bygone bmw era i think potentially the greatest bmw era so i'm super intrigued to see things like it's amazingly dated as i say mid 90s i think 94 95 this particular car but so much tech at the time this would have been the height of performance and luxury as all m5s are so we've got a lot of trick technology in here but it's going to be my wagon uh, my ride to the dealership to pick up that replacement wing mirror bit of glass now i just need to figure out how to start it i think immobilizer and then here nope bear with me if in doubt reset restart <laughs> okay oh that's got a nice little rumble to it 3.8 litre straight six engine around 340 horsepower through a manual gearbox in a wagon i love it how do i get into reverse it is it is good looking this car i think walking up to it in the sunlight the silver it just looks it looks good a few other nice creature comforts that i've noticed that i didn't when i first got in armrest look at this how executive that's so comfy and sunroof now how am i going to make this work oh <laughs> this is so cool the back <laughs> that is mad you can open the back like separately from the front and i didn't want to but right now he says we are ready to go we've got fuel got a little bit of engine temps onwards finally part obtained uh, this was the only dealership in london that had one of these in stock today for me to come and pick up otherwise I would have had to wait a few days and yeah I just didn't feel that safe it's weird how how reliant you become on wing mirrors I just didn't feel that safe driving that car without one of these so yeah I'll get that fitted when we go back but now that I kind of got used to this car kind of figured it out a bit more got all the temps up and running what do you say we take the scenic route back to the studio some 25 years later i mean mad i'll be honest completely mad you need to really rev the thing out it feels like all the power is kind of above 4000 rpm the red line itself is at 7000 rpm but you never really get there you have to really keep keep going but when you do the whole thing completely comes to life and it's it's almost terrifying things start moving around and you're kind of drawn in by the noise and the speed it's a completely different sensation to a modern M5, and you're not going to be surprised to hear me say that. I don't know if it feels 25 years old. Like, I would say it feels like 15 years old. It's incredibly composed. I mean, there's definitely a little bit more play in the steering and the suspension, but overall, it's a taut car. Now, let's see if I can get past this big, uh, big truck. Oh, yes, I'm away. Still going. Still going and I'm gonna to have to get out of it. I mean, honestly, that was third gear and up to about five and a half thousand RPM. I just never make it to seven and I'm just going way too fast. The thing is 
nuts. Now, hilariously, with this car, I do have, or at least with the M5 Touring, I have a, a, an option to change up the stiffness of the suspension. It's done by a little sort of discrete switch here, which says EDC, which I'm guessing is electronic damper control. I've got S and I've got P. I have no idea which one is which. What, what those letters mean is S sport or soft, and is P performance or plumpy? I don't know, but here we go again. And We're going. <laughs> now, it is not mind-bending speed in here. Nord 60 is just about sub six seconds. So, of course, most hot hatches these days are faster. But it's the way in which you go down the road at these speeds. It's the way that you're involved in the driving experience. And you don't forget that you're in a sort of relatively big car. I mean, small by today's standards, but still it feels long, it feels kind of wide-ish, and as I say, a tiny bit floaty. Maybe I'll flick the switch just to see if it's going to improve my, my feeling on the road. But it's just... Look, you're not going to get this car if you've currently got a brand new RS6, are you? I mean, this is not a thing. But you are going to get this car if you love this era, if this car speaks to you, if it, if it makes you feel something. And, and if it does, I think you're going to love it because it's, it's basically exactly what I expect it to be. OK, maybe it's not as fast as I thought it was going to be, despite the fact it is only 340 odd horsepower. I just kind of thought that the power delivery would be a little bit more well, a little bit more instant, maybe. As I say, you just, just keep revving, and then suddenly you're like, wow, here we go. It's just such a capable car. That's the thing that blows me away, and that's why I say it doesn't feel 25 years old. The amount of tech in here is nuts. I still have no idea, though, whether I'm in the sportier or the softer suspension setting now that I've flicked it. But what is great about this car is the livability factor, my new favourite word, because Basically, the entire way to the BMW dealership on the motorway or cruising around, it's great. The gearbox is pretty easy to use, as I mentioned, a, a five speed, but it doesn't feel sort of clunky or inherently extra sporty. The suspension was nice, it's a great place to be if you open up that sunroof, suddenly you've got all this light and this air. But now I'm out here on a on a twisty, and I do feel like I want to push on. It's not sports car in any way, like a modern M5 almost feels like a supercar. It's not the same kind of way. It's just you get enjoyment from going quickly. It's so funny how this brand BMW and how this mark, the or is it the other way around? Anyway, the specific M5 has changed in a 20, 25 year period. Because there are some elements of this car which you can see in the modern versions. The fact that it's got all this tech, it's got copious amounts of sort of things to make it comfortable and easy to live with, and then performance, but it's a very different kind of performance. It's a funny old car, and it's a funny car to go fast in, but it's, it's a fun car to go fast in. The more time I've spent with that car, the more I've enjoyed it, the more I've got to learn it and how to drive it and how to get the most out of it, whether I'm on a twisty road or on the motorway. It's just, it's just to quote here, so it's just so pure and simple. It's just about driving in a really nice car that then also has heated and ventilated seats and crazy onboard computers and that massive sunroof. It, this is a wonderful bit of kit. And I would say if it was 10 or 15,000 pounds, the ultimate daily. Like, what a cool thing just to cruise around and it kind of ticks almost every box, but that's where we run into a bit of a snag with this car because they are so rare, because they kind of represent these glory days of BMW and M. They're insanely valuable. Back in the mid-90s, if you wanted to order an M5 Touring new, you would be paying around 43 thousand pounds and okay fine inflation confuses things but essentially today if you want to buy one as in good condition as that is you're going to be paying the same money 40 43 45 thousand pounds effectively that car's lost nothing <laughs> which is quite ridiculous i get it for the collectors i get it for the real die-hard bmw enthusiasts it's nearly perfect but for the general enthusiast it's it's a bit too much isn't it there's there's lots of other fast wagons from a yesteryear half the price maybe even less i'm thinking rs4s and bits and bobs like that so as much as i've enjoyed it and as cool as this thing looks from the inside now and it's just you know pure and simple i'm going to quote here so once again yeah it's one of those ones that i think is maybe it's gone isn't it it's going to be big money in a few years so if you've got the money and you're intrigued what a thing to go out there and own. Anyway, I need to now go and fix my wing mirror. That was today's mission. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you found it informative. I hope you shone a light on a car maybe you didn't know existed or maybe you've always lusted after. So give the video a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it and make sure you stay subscribed for plenty more videos to come.